As he stood in the scorched rubble where his Jenny Street home of nearly 20 years once stood, Thomas Daxon vowed to rebuild. When the Nassau Guardian arrived at the scene of yesterday's destructive fire, we met Daxon sifting through his toolbox. Hoping to salvage badly burnt tools that he now needs to restart his life. He also came back for a piggy bank hoping that the coins inside are still salvageable. He lost his home, his fishing boat that helped him to provide for his family, and gardening tools that he used for his second job. I got a little piggy bank, I had to save it. At least they didn't burn, so I tried it. That's So we still the end of and get them clean again. Uh, that's about all I got to salvage. Like, everything else gone. All the clothes I had gone, the boat, they gone and so forth, you know. Burnt trees, charred vehicles, and yards of debris is all that's left in the aftermath of Sunday's fire that ripped through six homes and left four homes in need of extensive repairs. 73-year-old Andrew Griffin sat on a bucket outside of what's left of his family home. While he lost everything in the fire, he said he's grateful that his elderly mother, who is now in hospital, wasn't badly injured. I was uh, picking up some food for a neighbor house, and she came in house and tell me it's fire. And I look outside and I see the big blaze over there. So I call the fire truck. But uh, uh, after that, I just, you know, my mind went to her place. And uh, a lady assisted me by getting out. And then that was it. The fire, the heat was so hot that uh, we couldn't get back inside the house. But I thank God for her if she's still alive. Though no human lives lost, several dogs were not as fortunate, such as this rock wilder we understand was affectionately called Brownie. She was pregnant and unable to break free of her chain when the fire started. Thomas Daxon also lost a furry friend. After he freed his puppy, Girlie, she ran into the burning house, seemingly spooked by the flames. I really miss her. She was always trying to throw me down. You know, always running around the street. And there just wasn't enough time to, to get her out of the, the fire? What? I, w I wasn't paying no attention. I went in the house, she went after me. And then she, when I went out, she didn't, she didn't come here. Yeah, she wasn't turning back to Philly. And I wasn't paying no attention. According to Dax and residents in the area complained about the yard where the fire reportedly started, but nothing ever came out of those complaints. The, the, the fellow who's, what do you call it? What is it, squatting? Right next door, everyone on Pilots was. We've been complaining about it for months and months and months. And you no know, release came and said they can move them, move them. Fellas, they, they keep coming back. They run them off, they come right back. They ain't lock, lock up none of them, you know? That's, that's the sort of thing, start the fire. The residents believe more could have been done to save their homes. But the fire trucks, first of all, in the 21st century, they were using bucket of water to hold the lamp hole, and then one of the trucks came and break down. Two trucks came, and one had to go back for more water went back for water and came back again and then I mean they could have saved this house they could have saved at least this and that home there that, and, the, and the ones over there the fire engine them didn't have enough water the fire engine uh, some people say the fire engine break down right and the fire engine them need to be updated the cleanup process is underway as dumpsters and tractors were brought into the area by PLP candidate Lisa Ramming. Utility workers were also in the area repairing damaged wires and poles. This was a promising sign for residents who say they plan to rebuild. For the Guardian News Network, I'm Georgie O'Bain.